Hello, viewers. I'm SB. And I'm Amabel. And welcome back to Pentiment, where we are just about to return to Kearsau Abbey and discover what in the heck is going on with the financial situation around here. Because it seems like everybody in the town feels like the church has been more extractive than ever. But everybody who is from the Abbey feels like the Abbey doesn't have any money. And yeah. that seems strange to me. The money's going somewhere. <laughs> Is the Abbey just getting super squeezed from the top? Or my impression would be that it would be the Abbey that would be sort of the top dog in this particular chain. Not that there's not, you know, higher religious authorities, but that like, was well, there, I mean, was there like a direct taxation system that ran all the way to the top or? You know, I'm not a hundred percent certain about that. I mean, I know that traditionally, um, oh, I was just looking at those trees. You know about those trees real quick? Sure. So look how good those trees are. Those They're are good, good trees. trees. I like sure. those very much. Yeah. They actually remind me a lot of the trees from Eric Romer's film Percival, which is the only Eric Romer film I can stand. Okay. Uh, which makes sense because that film was like made like a limited manuscript. So I Sweetie. guess that makes sense. So I, yeah. Sweetie, I love you were in the middle of a thought. <laughs> Sorry, I'm distracted by trees. Um, so I think traditionally, uh, churches do not get taxed by, um, secular authorities. Right. And so the money would just be going up through the church to, you Yeah, know, yeah, that was sort of my question. Because like, the, the Abbey's going to collect the money and it's going to go to, like, the diocese, mm -hmm. and to the archdiocese, and then to the Pope man. So is, so, the, is that a possibility that the, the people above the church are squeezing... The people above Curacao are squeezing Curacao. That is a possibility. It's also okay. a possibility someone's skimming off the top because the thing about um, church finances is that they are generally inherently corrupt. You would think, though, the church would be one of the places where that would happen the least, not because of any moral whatever about the church, but just because in the church you're most likely to find like a concentration of people who can read and do math, like the skills necessary to catch skimming off the books i mean yeah but it's also the, the people who are more likely to you know get theirs i i don't know it's a hey rudiger definitely... sorry i'm definitely interested in finding out what was going on with the finances okay. give me a financial mystery andres oh it's wonderful to see you again how have things been for you in nuremberg uh, well, I've actually been in Barcelona recently. I'm trying real hard not to be in Nuremberg. Uh, are we honest with... It? We don't have any strong feelings about Rudiger. Literally, the only things I remember about Rudiger are that he has a beautiful singing voice and that he fucked Matthias that one time. Yeah. Presumably more times than that, but the one time we know of. I mean, did, wait, hang on. Did he fuck Matthias or did Matthias fuck him? Because it looked... It looked like there was some short top energy going on there, is all I'm saying. Oh, Matthias for sure is like the short king of that relationship. <laughs> I have zero doubt of that. Also, I, be I believe Matthias did tackle Rudiger. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. What we yeah. saw. Oh, I'm just talking about like his whole vibe in general. Yeah, that's, that's true. And I, I guess that singing voice is useful in a... <laughs> Never mind. Never mind. What on I'm earth? To behave. Okay. <laughs> I the thing is, a lot of the time when you do like a half of an innuendo and then back out, I at least know where you were going. Is it like a lung capacity joke? Or I guess okay, you, we're not gonna do it on camera. Remember I though, because I have questions afterward. Uh yeah, well, you know, Nuremberg is the same as it always is, diplomatic answer. Ah, well, it's good to see you in any case. Okay, he knew what that meant. He followed. Forgive me for asking, but how do you find the music in Arag Aragon? It is so hard for me not to say Aragorn every single time. Wonderful. Oh, sweetie, what? don't do not do that. You'll, you'll piss off some Spanish people. Wonderful. Several years ago, I heard a cantor in Zaragoza with a wonderful voice and interesting comp uh, compositions. Is cantor a low enough frequency word? I guess because it's used here in a specific context. Yeah. They felt the need to define it. I was going to say, it doesn't seem like a lower low, low enough frequency word to need this. 
Uh, but here it does actually mean an appointed official in a monastery. There is a domain-specific definition of this word. Uh, also, Zaragoza is an Aragonese city with a tumultuous past, uh, which has been held under both Christian and Muslim rule. Jewish persecutions are prevalent under the current Christian rule. It's a little familiar. Yeah, sadly. Uh, I believe his name was Juan Garcia de Pasurto, although he has since moved on to another cathedral. This is probably yeah, a real person, right? Yeah, I'm gonna, I'm gonna. Oh, well, I clicked away uh, from his name uh, already, so I hope you have that. Oh, uh, maybe uh, Juan Gar Garcia. Garcia. <laughs> That's not a common name at all. Um, the last name is B A S U R. Uh, Spanish composer. Okay. Uh, a cantor at the Cathedral of Terrazona at the time of the Flemish Chapel. Sure. Uh, um, tell, tell me more about him, Wikipedia. Uh, his major work is the compiled, rec compiled Requiem Mass Missa in Agendis Mortuorum. In 1525. So he's, he's done some, yeah, some church music, basically. Okay. That's Shocking. that guy. Oh, if he is as talented as you say, I must imagine we will see his music sooner or later. I love our music, of course, but I am interested in what is being created across Christendom. I suppose you came to pay your respects to Brother Piero. I'm so sorry, Andreas. He was a wonderful man and a faithful servant of Christ. Um, I'm gonna, I'm just gonna say that he was. I don't need to argue with this dude. He's being nice right now. Yeah. Well, despite the occasion, it is good to see you again. That was almost certainly a fake choice. Like it almost, it almost certainly had no effect either way. All right, nice to see Rudiger again. Hey, Matthias, uh, Matthew. What did I call him Matthias earlier? Matthias is a different guy. You know, I wonder if in, in Monk on Monk Sex, if, if, if tonsures make it difficult for hair pulling. <sighs> Not that was pretty tame. That was pretty tame. What do you think I'm being judgmental about? I don't know. The, 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 the joke was the tameness. The joke was I didn't oh. I didn't like your joke because it wasn't ribbled enough. Like what do you grab onto there? There's no <laughs> Okay. No, Hello? a beard a beard works. <clears throat> I guess that's why they all grew them. Anyway. Uh, Hello. Who is this? Uh, it's Andreas, Brother Adoc. Andreas Mahler. Oh. Oh, Andreas, the fine young artist from Nuremberg. <laughs> Not quite so young anymore, brother. No, you are still young. When you were last here, I thought I was old. I was wrong. Now I feel the true measure of years on these bones. Oh. Like the waves of the wide sea on the cliffs of Porthkragen, time has worn me down. But enough of that. How have you been, Andreas? Um, I like this. Mm -hmm. I, we'd be honest with Brother Adok, right? Yeah, we like Brother Adok. And Casper kind of already knows our, our deal. Yeah. Well, successful in body, if not in spirit. Oh, I'm sorry, Andreas. The dreams of youth often do not survive the march of years. But take heart that the Lord is always here for us in times of sorrow. Uh, you know, you seem more at ease now than when I was last here. Do I? It may be so. I may have worked in the scriptorium beyond the limits of this body. It pained my joints and strained my brotherly love for Guy. <laughs> yeah, having to be around Guy will do that. The scriptorium took my sight and the use of my hands. But when it closed, it also took the pain from my heart. The abbot is content to let me serve the Lord through prayer and contemplation. And so it also contents me. I'm sorry, Andreas, but I must rest now. It is good to hear your voice at Kearsau again. God bless you. 
And God bless you, Brother Enoch. So he is in rough shape. Yeah. It is unclear to me whether he has any vision left, or if, if his eyes have gotten like totally bad, or, or if his guys have, uh, eyes have gotten really bad, or if he's fully blind. Um, but yeah, it seems rough. So the scriptorium is just fully not in, in operation at all, which definitely would hurt the Abbey's income. Yeah. Uh, the scriptorium fell into disrepair quickly after Father Gernot closed the library. Hey, look who it is. Oh, oh Andreas, you're back. Uh, ahem. <laughs> I don't feel like we should start off by being mean to her, and you're no. still here is a little harsh. I'm just going to say hello. Hello, Sister Zedena. That's all you have to say? Hello? Uh, oh, of course. Yeah, God God bless you, sister. Ugh. Still an ass, I see. Still, I hear you're a master artist now. I'm impressed. What did she want me to say? Something horny, probably. Probably or something familiar. horny, but, like, I don't know who's listening. There could be somebody I mean, right know, on the other side the of that door. Listening. Oh, yeah. Also, also, I know <laughs> Casper's right here. Good point. I do. I do know at least some of who's listening, and it is a problem. You know, I've grown as well, in a variety of ways. Uh, uh <laughs> I, I, I like the first one. I like the first one, actually. Okay, we're doing it, I guess. <laughs> oh, you'll have to show me sometime. Ugh, Andreas, I'm not indulging you again. Wait, was it that bad? <laughs> oh, yeah, I like that, too. Huh. No, it wasn't. But what happened afterward was bothersome. Thank God Sister Gertrude knows her plants. Oh. Oh. I don't... Oh. You fell pregnant. Andreas! There's a... The kid is right there. <laughs> Yes, thankfully, Sister Gertrude helped me end it a fort before a fortnight had passed, so the fetus was yet unformed. It worked pretty quick. That, that It was not very long. Yeah. Uh. Well. I mean, I just can't stomach as as much as as much as we have talked in the past about how I like to sink into character and do a thing that's not like me. Um, on occasion, I don't, I can't stomach. Yeah, the 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 top one's the only one I'd be comfortable with personally. <laughs> Fair enough. I'm sorry I put you in that position. I chose that path as much as you did, Andreas. I'm living with the consequences. If Sister Gertrude's remedy hadn't worked, I would have been defrocked, and my family would have disowned me. I nearly lost everything. All for one stupid fling with you. I was sick for days on end and still have terrible cramps. But still, it's not as bad as it could have been. Uh, okay, so this is shitty. I'm grateful Sister Gertrude was able to keep you well. <sighs> Me too. Ah, uh, that was a good night. I still remember Mother Illuminata's face. So I know that this is what you would do. Excuse me, you are the one on camera who said that whenever you could say someone was illuminating, you would. Shit, I did say that. You did say I that. I think it's less, it's less, no, you're right though, you got me. Well, her expression was illuminating. Oh, <laughs> God, Andreas. You should have heard the tongue wagging she gave me afterward. Quite impressive. Resist. Hold it. I can hear the pressure building up over there. It's good to see you again, Andreas. Likewise, sister. Maybe a weird thing to say, given the... <clears throat> I should return to my duties. Thank you for speaking with me. Uh, yeah, until later. You're, like, not supposed to be speaking with me, I think. I'm pretty sure, actually... 
uh, what's his face would be mad to know that I talked to anyone in here except him, but. Well, and Illuminata, you know, in the in the pursuance of our yeah. duties. God bless you, Andreas. It has been too long. I know Father Abbott made it clear you were not to return when you left, but we had hoped to hear from you. Uh, yes, my apologies. You're you're right, of course. I did a really bad job of keeping up my correspondence. Uh, it's good to see you again, or good day. I mean, it's good to see you again. Yeah. This is my apprentice, Casper Ziegler from Salzburg. God bless you, Mother Superior. God bless you, young Casper. No greeting for your favorite library helper? We are, we just we just had a conversation. She needs to, like, drag me in front of Illuminata. It's good to see you, sister. You as well. This is this is a hundred percent about making Illuminata uncomfortable, and I, I'm kind of here for it. I'm sorry you have to see it in such a state. It sees very little use these days. What happened? After Baron Rothvogel's murder, we had fewer and fewer wealthy patrons. The small number that held out lost interest. It's easier to commission new work from the Guild of St. Luke or individual masters in big cities like Nuremberg. Uh, the Guild of St. Luke. Damn it. I forgot. I forgot that I'm not supposed to advance things with the keyboard because there's no way to click on stuff yeah. without advancing. Well, well St. Luke is the patron saint of artists, so I, I assume that's it's like an artist guild. Yeah. Father Gernot so no, saw no reason to keep the scriptorium or library open. Most of the books here have been suffering of neglect. After Mother Cecilia's death, neither I nor Sister Zadina had the time to maintain our inventory. Well, that's terrible. Kirsa was one of the last monastic scriptoria in Bavaria. As Brother Piero was fond of saying, all things change in time. Now all that remains are books for, sal uh, for sale to interested parties, a task that Father Gernot has entrusted to me. And Sister Zedena, of course. She can hear the glare from behind her. Uh, I, I don't even know where to start. Master Andreas, perhaps you could find a book for little Magdalene, something that's not in print yet. Excellent idea, Casper. Ah, uh, little Magdalene. <laughs> Zadina's art is really good. Very charming. Yeah. Parzival. Uh, perhaps Klaus would not object to this romance, given its emphasis on Christian virtues. Um, I believe that's... So can you click on the... Great question. Uh, can I? I'm trying to. The only way for the mouse cursor to appear will be for me to click, and if I click, it's going to advance the dialogue. Oh, but uh, but I mean, click on the um the under the parts of the underlying. Yeah, that's what I. Uh, okay, gotcha. Sorry. The German um, is a little dated, but I'm sure she'll figure it out with Klaus's help. I have to like make sure to only. I'm sure there is a button on this keyboard that okay. does the zoom outs, but I don't know what it is. So I gotta be so, careful to always interact with things with the mouse, not with the keyboard. So if it's the same parts of all that I'm thinking of, um, you remember that French film I talked about when I was looking at trees? Ready Player One? It was, it, sweetheart. That's two layers of jokes because, first of all, obviously it's the thing where you, you get disappointed with me. But secondly, I believe that is the online handle of the main character in in Ready Is Player it? One, so it looked like I it looked like I was oh. talking about a thing. I might be wrong okay. about that. I don't, I've not actually read it. Oh, I, it it's, it's definitely an, a, an Arthurian night, though. But well, um, sure, sure. But I, bl I believe this is the romance that um, that the movie Percival that uh, Percival that I was talking about with the trees was based on. Okay. So that's that's an, I don't know. I thought that was neat that I happened to see trees and think of it, and here it comes up. So. Who knows? Maybe it will inspire her imagination. 
Maybe. Could be. What about this? Something a little more interesting, perhaps? Huh. I think these are Latin translations of some of Origen's homilies. Oh! Also, it looks like it's partially burned. Uh, Origen is a prolific first century aesthetic, ascetic, not aesthetic, different things, uh, and theologian best known for his exegetical writings and homilies. Influenced the development of the Trinity and the ransom theory of atonement. So, Origen is, is um, I used to know all this church stuff. Um, he's really complicated in the church because there are a lot of his um, writings and teachings that are not quite heretical, but kind of heretical. And so he's like one of the few uh, theologians from that period who isn't like a doctor of the church. Like his, his stuff is, is very kind of in a gray area. Yeah, I kind of assume so, because I'm assuming that the uh, the partially burned nature of this thing has a lot to yeah. do with uh, some of the people at the Abbey perhaps feeling like it is heretical and others not. Probably not a great gift for a young girl. Wait. This is the same book hand as the notes I found when the Baron was murdered. Oh, shit. Good eye, Andreas. Whoever wrote this is responsible for writing those notes. I need to ask Illuminata about this. That's very interesting. A copy of, Jago of Jacobus de Voragine's Golden Legend? Anything? You know that one? Uh, I probably should, but I don't. That word's... Oh wait, the gold wait the gold wait, the golden legend. Hang on. That word looks like Libya. Uh, am I actually holding on or was that a uh yeah, no I uh, no we'll keep going. I just okay. I'm, I'm trying to remind myself of which thing it is. Every good Christian should know the legends of the saints. Oh, sick burn from Andreas Mahler. He doesn't think you're a good Christian. Well, I'm not. <laughs> and the Latin is simple <laughs> enough that she should be able to read it before long. Yeah, okay, yeah, the Golden Legend is, yeah, it's... It's exactly what he just said it was, and I think, um... Yeah, just <laughs> go ahead. Oh, Richard de Berry's Philo Biblon. It's a text on the collection and preservation of books. Richard de Berry, of course, a 13th century English priest and leader, Bishop of Durham. Uh, one of the first private book collectors, best known for this book here, which prescribed the care of his collection. Hmm, maybe this is where Illuminata and Cecilia learned all their tricks. Certainly a good book for a printer's daughter. All right, that's who Madeline is, right. And finally, Albertus Magnus's De Animalibus. This is a renowned 13th century Dominican theologian, philosopher, astrologer, and Bishop of Regensburg. A prolific writer, he was known primarily for his work on Aristotle and his knowledge of natural science. How similar do you think this is to Grim Bass's Animalia? I don't know, because you haven't read it to me yet. That is nonsense. I absolutely have. You did read that to me. Yeah, that's, right. the, that's the one. It was the other one you didn't read to me yeah. yet. Okay. It's ostensibly a bestiary, but it contains so much more knowledge on a variety of topics. This could inspire an interest in animals in the natural world. Beautiful illustrations as well. No, what's the illustration? No, that's not. That's rude. <laughs> that we don't get to see any of them. Yeah, they are. Don't. They are mentioned but not displayed. <laughs> that does suck. Video games, not... like filmmaking, are a visual it, medium. It's not like this is a game that has a lot of art of cool fucking animals. No, absolutely not. 
Have you decided on any books to purchase? Yes, just one. Oh. Parzival. 13th century retelling of the Arthurian hero Percival, written by Wolfram von Eschenbach. Themes of love and chivalry are prominent in this adventure tale. Well, I gotta tell you, I do like the Animalibus. I think that's probably yeah. a fun gift for a kid. Yeah, and if, if I remember Parzival, the... Um, I think some of it's not appropriate for children, frankly. Also, I don't think this kid is going to be all that into the philo, the philo Biblon, frankly. Whether or not it would be a book of utility. Well, it contains a wealth of knowledge. I'm sure you'll enjoy it. And Klaus Strucker's daughter, Magdalene, will. The Latin may pose a challenge for her, but I'm sure with persistence she can overcome it. Is there anything else you need? Yes. Mother Illuminata, what do you know about this book? I don't know anything. This is the first time I've seen it. Where did, where did you find it? I've seen it on one of the lower shelves. I don't think it's in our catalog. It's burned around the edges. Why? How can I find out where it came from? Who wrote it? Uh, if it's not in our catalog, I'm afraid I don't know who you could ask. If it was a recent edition, the only people who would know are Mother Cecilia and Father Matthias. Well, that's very inconvenient. <laughs> Let's not respond with this. Well, hmm. Actually, I was going to say, let's not make a necromancy joke to the nun, but do we want to give her this information? Does she know about the notes already? I think she uh, she might because at least one of the the one of the nuns got a note. Remember, that's true. I I, I don't go ahead. Does she gave that note directly to us though? Right? Like I don't think. Yeah. Hmm. I have. I feel like trusting these two. That that's my it might be the wrong okay. call. All right. But well, that's a shame you, because whoever scribed this book wrote the letters I found while investigating the Baron's murder. The ones in the fine book hand. Brother Adok told me about them. Perhaps he knows something about this book. He's been here longer than any of us. Why would the person who wrote the letters have scribed a book in our library? Well, that's the question. Whoever did it is the thread puller. A terrible name. I was just—I was leaving myself room to edit in a dramatic sting. You know the 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 first the first occurrence of the thread pullers theme goes wait, here. Did, wait, did did I ruin your sting? No, I'm absolutely not going to put effort forth to do a. Listen, how much effort is a joke worth? Somewhere between none and not very much. Well, actually, you know what? I'm remembering the blood wheel and everything now. Sometimes a lot, but not this time any anyway. Huh? Someone who was manipulating people at Kirsau and Tassing, pulling at threads to provoke someone into killing the Baron. I thought one of the brothers killed the Baron. Well, he did, but the Baron was lured to the chapter house by someone who knew Kirsau and Tassing's secrets. Well, I'm afraid we can't be of any more help to you in determining the book's provenance. <laughs> Desperately trying to get us to do this outside. However, as it's not in our catalog and it's already damaged, I doubt Father Abbott would mind if you kept it. Excellent. Thank you. I'm glad someone bothered to save it from the flames. Is, is, this is very curious. This is very curious indeed. So, like, someone who used to scribe here who didn't anymore by the time that we got here. Yeah. All right. We are to eat with the Druckers and share our thing, but Zidana bailed out of there pretty fast. Oh, I was hoping she had something to say. Uh, well, I don't reckon there's probably going to be all that much value in running around inside the church during lunchtime. Yeah. 
she says, doing it anyway. Yeah, love that for you. Um, so, so the book that that we found with the burned in the book hand, that that's that origin book, right? Yes. Okay. So, uh, refreshing myself on origin briefly. Um, so what it? Oh. Uh, she really wasn't that old. No. Uh, Rest in peace, old friend. The, the deal with Origins writing is that uh, later heretical ideas were based on Origins writing, which then called his writing into question. So that's where it's kind of like a, in a gray area. Okay. Guilt by guilt by association that was made later, after Centuries I was already later. dead. Yeah. Yeah. I just don't get it. How do people turn away from the wisdom of the church? There was a pope that was excommunicated um, like a century or two after his death because he had not condemned a certain heresy strongly enough. And there's actually like a lot of from, well, I, I don't want to say a lot. There is controversy among people who care about church shit who like, hey, this pope should not have been excommunicated. He should be reinstated or whatever that's called. I'm sure there's a word for it. Recommunicated. Yeah. Is this, is this the cadaver synod or is that a different thing? No, the cada the cadaver synod is a, is a is a later thing. It's a different time that they all got together to shout at a corpse. Yeah, well the shout at the corpse I mean that guy was not a great pope. So actually the the pope that was the the cadaver synod guy uh was the featured pope on this week's episode of Pontifax. Which is a podcast I listen to where people talk about popes and the two ladies rank the popes on a variety of um, criteria, including um, controversy and looks. It's, it's a fun show. I would recommend that. Colorability, moistness. But those aren't, they should be, but those are not. Um... Unfortunately, there are very few historical records of moistness that, that have survived to the current day. Well, famously, because once it gets moist, it's going gonna, it's gonna to start decomposing. Uh, so this is the Drucker house. Before we go to the Drucker house, I just want to look around a little bit more. Because like, this is a time of day when people might actually be about. What's up, bakery man? God bless you, Andreas. God bless you, Ulrich. How have you been? I don't know if that's Ulrich or Ulrich. Just call him bakery man. The Lord has been kinder to me than the peasants. These are difficult times for them, Andreas. They could use your help. My help? How? Talk to the abbot. He may respect your opinion more than mine or the peasants. I would have hoped he could see that his behavior is not Christian, but something is clouding his judgment. Well, I am not exactly in Father Gernot's good graces. I doubt he would listen to anything I had to say. Well, we must try, Andreas. These men are fair and hard-working, but they've been pushed down for too long. They're becoming desperate, and desperate men can forget their faith and turn to violence. Well, what if violence is the only language the abbot understands, asking for a friend? <laughs> when a man can't keep his family fed... He can only keep that pain inside for so long. Make no mistake, the peasants hold Father Gernot responsible for their lot. If there is fire in their hearts, we must pray for rain. Well, I'll, listen, I'll do what I can. Thank you, and God bless you, Andreas. I am not at all certain what I can. Anna and Gret. She's still wearing your hat. 
She is. She is wearing up like she's patched it a couple of times, obviously. That's that's lovely. That is lovely. God bless you, Andreas. I'm thankful you returned to Tassig after so long. We prayed so fondly for you after you left. Uh <laughs> I hope your prayers offset the abbots. This, yeah, you know how you know like how that. God is always counting up the votes like it's TRL. What's TLR? What's TRL? Don't don't worry about it. Hey, don't Andres. get any of your references. Well, it's because we're from different generations, don't you know? Just because I'm so old, I am robbing the cradle. See, if you just say it like that without the context of the fact that you are in fact like t eighteen months older than I am. Eight, no, I am more than 18 months older than you are. Okay, but not very much. No, I'm... Andreas, I'm sure the abbot prays for your wellness, even if you left on poor terms. And now God has allowed you to return. Perhaps he is providing an opportunity for the two of you to reconcile. Yeah, I suppose I could talk to the abbot, at least. We are commanded to do so, just as Paul said. Be kind and compassionate to one another, forgiving each other, just as in Christ God forgave you. I feel like there's a few people in Tassing who could use that advice. Ah, that's right. You were at Otto's speech earlier. Yes, Tassing's peasants are struggling, and now even we townsfolk are pinched by the abbot's new restrictions. I worry about my husband. He's getting too involved with the whole business. Well, I mean... I do kind of want to probe here. You disagree? I... Yes, I do. I love my husband, but sometimes I worry that he focuses too intently on the details. He does not see that he may be both prudent and Christian. I pray that I am only, uh, I pray that I am not acting selfishly, uh, but the abbot's taxes have affected us too. What about, Anna, uh, what about Anna's future? Ulrich has been offering credit to Peter for years, which I've accepted, but now we can only bake so much bread a week before we go hungry ourselves. Uh, can you talk to him, Andreas? Uh, um... I'm going to wiggle out of this. Well, I spoke with him earlier. He seems pretty set on supporting the peasants. Ah, uh, yes, that does sound like him. I suppose I'll take it up with him over supper again. God bless you, Andreas. Okay, let's not be here during their supper. Hey, Anna, can I have my hat back? No? All right. It looks better on her than it ever did on me, to be fair. Yeah, no, she's rocking it. Werner! Okay, nothing. Just saying hi to everybody. We're not going to be able to go up these stairs, right? Yeah, I can't. I can't step into the background. Eisenkopf. Do we, do, do we know? No, you look new. Salutations! You must be that wonderful artist, no? Uh, Master Andreas Mahler, yes. Wonderful, wonderful. Uh, Baltasar Eisenkopf at your service, uh, but you may call me Baltas, please. It's much more familiar. Uh, sure, a pleasure, Baltas. Have you been in Tassing long? Oh, just a few seasons. My cart broke down and I found the place so charming I decided to stay. I enjoy the quiet, but I must say, I do miss the company of other intellectuals. Usually that good Dr. Stoltz and I whittle, away the, uh, whittle the hours away in the evenings. So, naturally, when I uh, heard a well-known artist had returned, well, I was beside myself. So, you're an artist, then? Oh, Christ, no. I'm, well, I'm an inventor. Really? What do you make? All sorts of things, young man. 
Mechanical clocks of all sizes, metal mice that skitter about, even light without flame. Okay, buddy. I can't see how any of that would be useful. Who ever heard of needing a clock? Well, that's truly impressive, Baltus. Thank you, Andreas. I knew a fellow artist such as yourself would appreciate my work. Ah, well, I'd best get back to it. You know how it is for us few called to a higher art. I don't... This guy's... I don't like him. He's pompous in a weird way where he's, like, folding me into it. Yeah. Also, I like before the typo corrected where he had, he had to get bacon into it. Yeah, <laughs> I... I very nearly read that that way. <laughs> Every once in a while, the typos are just better. Uh, is anything going on in the town square? Well, mayhap, Carl and Fabian. Do we know Carl and Fabian? We met Carl. I don't remember Fabian. Hey, Till. What is going on, my friend? Where are your sheep? Apparently you have no interest in talking to me about this subject. Otto! Andreas? So, Otto, the sign from God? Oh, right. Well, I found something just a few days ago. This'll, this will sound crazy, but I found... I found St. Moritz's head. That's... You're right, that does sound crazy. Well, believe it, because it's true. Alright, I can't say anything more until St. John's Day. Then everyone will know. Shh. Who else knows about this? Well, only those who need to know. And you, of course. Feel lucky? Uh, yeah, absolutely. Could I maybe get, a, like, a detailed list? Of all the people? No, apparently not. Because, right, this is like... This is at least half a motive. I would really love to know exactly who knows. Depending on what happens, it may be very valuable yeah. information. But he doesn't think he's gonna die. And he doesn't know that I have crazy murder senses. I mean, plot construction too. <laughs> you know, I don't think most people think of their own lives that way. That's probably for the best. I think people who would see them see it that way are, I would worry, you know? Magdalene! Aw. Ah. Look at this little kitty. Klaus, how's it going? Oh, you're back. Good. We're almost ready to sit down to eat. Would you and Casper care to join us? Of course. Thank you, Klaus. Welcome back, Andreas, Casper. Andreas, these are my friends, Benjamin and Rachel Summerfield. They're on their way back to Prague. Prague is an imperial city of the Holy Roman Empire. The city's mint made it a hub for German and Italian bankers and merchants, and its university became a gathering place for many Reformation thinkers. I'm very familiar with Prague. Yeah? Is this, are, you, are, you, are you making a joking reference to earlier? Uh, well, I mean, no, I'm making a joke because no, no, no one listening would get that. Okay. No, oh, no, no. A, All right. I see. I see. I see. I'm making a reference to progesterone. <laughs> Fair enough. My brain, my brain went to the fact that we were talking about the the city of Prague in Total War Warhammer uh, earlier today, and then from there to Prague Rock. I got. To, it took me a long time to figure out. Okay. I mean, I also know a lot about Prague Rock. Yeah, but, that's what I was um, like. That's come up a bunch. Yeah, but I mean, Prague comes up in my daily life, so. <laughs> What are you chewing on? What do you have? <laughs> Troublemaker. A good day. Hello. Excuse me for not getting up. It's a bit difficult. 
Well, of course, I understand. It's the it's nice to meet you both. Hello. What is he doing with his arm? Who? This Andreas. He has this, this weird arm thing going on. I think it's just his elbows on the table. Although I will say oh, his, on his the table? fingers. Oh, yeah, are, the, yeah. His fingers are doing something. Wait, which joint is that? Because like this bit here, this straight bit here, is this supposed to be the part like between the first and second knuckle? Because then like, what the fuck is with the length of the... Mm -hmm. <laughs> okay, this doesn't matter. Getting focused on the details. You know what the problem is? All this mid-journey bullshit has trained me to look very critically at the the number and composition of the fingers in every image so that I can tell if I'm being tricked by a computer. Yeah. Hello. That sounded like a real word, Klaus. Well, she's learning more of them every day. She'll be reading before long. Well, that's a wonderful seg to the gift that I've brought her. Oh? <laughs> oh, I wouldn't. I, yeah, I would maybe, maybe don't link it to my bad feelings. Just like he just like here's a present. It's a book from the Abbey Library. Is this for her or for you? Her, I swear. Albertus Magnus Magnus's Diana Malibus. Andreas, she's only two years old. Well, but I'm sure she'll learn quickly in a printer's house. Ah, thanks for this. It's a nice thought. Well, we should probably pray before we eat, assuming the Summerfields don't mind. Not at all. We're accustomed to being guests in Christian homes. Well, thank you for asking, Klaus. All right, I'll lead the prayer then. Bless us, O Lord, and these your gifts, which we are about to receive from your bounty. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Aw, oh, good try, Bags. Klaus, thank you again for letting us stay here. It's been such a long trip. Oh. Is it time? I, no, no, I'm fine, I think. I just, I'm just sore everywhere. Oof. Anyway, we'd hoped to get home weeks ago. But the fighting has made slow pro has made it slow progress from Basil. Uh, Basil, Tassing is hardly on the way to Prague. Uh, we'd rather not get caught up in battles between the Swabian League and the peasants, so we've taken a strange route. The Swabian League was the military group maintained by the free imperial cities of the Holy Roman Empire. Members included nobles, knights, and hired or retained mercenaries. And this guy, he just cannot believe it. Incredible facts. He is astonished by this book's do doctrines. Uh, we were in Basel to do some business, but we didn't want to overstay our welcome. So, like, this is, this is Andreas, like, reconsidering how he sees this guy. Yeah. Is that how we're taking that? Yeah. Is it really so bad for Jews there? Let's just say they've gone back and forth enough on Jews in Basel that it's best not to feel too comfortable. We felt comfortable enough with our host, but Benjamin is right. We couldn't stay long. Do you know the printer, Johann Froben? I'm not familiar with him now. Well, he's a very successful printer, turned Basel into the center for Swiss printing. He employs incredible artists and form cutters. He even prints books in Greek and Hebrew. And that's why we visited. Benjamin and I are creating a Hebrew type for him. Well, it turns out that when your town banishes all the Jews, you have a more difficult time finding Jews to work for you. Who would have guessed? I just wish it hadn't taken us so long to get home. We have so far to go still. Ah, it's lucky timing for me, though. Now I have two printers and a master artist at my dinner table. True, it is an all misfortune. Daddy. Oh, yes, thank you. 
And a future printer and baby printer to be. Tassing hasn't seen this many artists under one roof in a while. So we can keep pressing about like the specifics of this this family's deal. Yeah. I don't know. These all these feel like three like they're going to take the conversation in three very different directions. Yeah. Um, I don't have a strong feeling about any of these. So you choose. OK, I, I'm going to keep. I'm going to keep talking, talking to these people. It seems like they could use a friendly. I don't know if this is like invasive. I want to be perceived yeah. as friendly and interested. I clicked on, sorry, I clicked on the word prog again. Benjamin is trying to create a more readable script for Yiddish. We have typefaces for Hebrew, but it would be nice to have something separate for Yiddish. Oh, that could be useful for printing parallel text translations of the Bible. I hadn't thought of that, though our women read Yiddish and they don't study scripture. Yet, <laughs> don't let Rabbi Hayoth hear you say that. I'd like our writing to be more accessible, especially to those who only read Yiddish. Here, something like this. Uh, I'll be sure to send you some samples when I'm finished, Klaus. Uh, good, I'd like the... Oof. I'm, yeah, yeah, okay, yes, I'm fine. Klaus, what are you working on? I need to get ready to, uh, to sell to travelers as the pass is open, but lately I've been printing the 12 articles for the town. 12 articles. Thanks to Father Thomas, everyone in town can read at least well enough to make it through that sheet. It's got a lot of people talking, and a lot are coming over to Otto's way of thinking. Well, you heard him yourself, Andreas. What do you think of what's happening in Tassing? Well, the abbot's always been an ass. What do you expect? You're not wrong. Remember what happened to Attilia's house? The abbot took it away. She lost everything. She works for Father Thomas now. Uh, yeah, I spoke with her. Quite unexpected, given her attitude toward the church. Well, I was as surprised as you are now. We all were. But that was the only charity available to her. Sorry, not trying to bring up bad memories. I was just trying to say that things have been hard on the peasants for years. It's just gotten worse lately. If the Abbey is in such a bad state, there must be someone the Abbot can appeal to for more money. Uh, the Duke of Bavaria may lend him military aid. Money seems unlikely. The Duke, uh, Duke of Bavaria, the title is held jointly by two brothers, Louis X and William IV. Both are working to suppress the peasant revolts. Do you think that this bottom thing is, like, is this appropriate to how we feel about this conflict? I think I'm just going to say the middle one. Okay. He could try to sit down with Otto and work something out. Otto's tried to reason with him. The abbot won't listen. Yeah, I'm not shocked okay, by that. Got the, uh, apple pie, white bread, mushroom pottage. Uh, let's, let's start here. Notice yeah. again, nobody's, nobody's dish is quite as full as ours. Yeah. We're sympathetic to what's happening here. We saw it all throughout Swabia. Peasants are suffering. It's true, but I wonder about, I worry about what will happen in Tassing. P. Ow. I'm fine. Ugh. Peasants are no match for the soldiers of the Swabian League. What is the Swabian League? Asper, weren't you paying attention when we clicked on the link? <laughs> it's almost like he can't see the, uh, the outer layers of the story. Well, they're bastards who think they can crush people for the crime of standing up for themselves. Well, right or wrong, they can crush them. We saw their handiwork. 
It was brutal. If the peasants aren't careful, Tassing could draw the wrong sort of attention. Well, I know that Otto and the peasants are taking a risk, but I believe Otto will keep things peaceful. Anyway, it's not the Swabian League we have to worry about, but the soldiers of the Duke of Bavaria. Bavaria. The Prince Bishop has the church's authority, but the Duke's lands surround Tassing and Kearsau. That's, yeah, that's problematic. Uh, okay, apparently I'm taking this moment upon myself to just, like, dive right into an apology. <laughs> uh, gosh, which version of it? Uh, let's see. Okay, so this one, this one I'm making excuses. I don't like that. No. This is kind of making excuses, but I think it's a lot. It, it lends a lot more credence to his pain, which I like at least. Yeah, I'm I'm leaning more towards the first or the fourth, personally. Yeah. I'm going to I'm going to go for the first one. Klaus, I'm sorry for showing up yesterday without writing. You had every right to be angry. I've been traveling so much I missed most of your letters. And so much time passed when I finally heard about Bert Marie. I'm sorry. Uh. It does seem like a weird moment to suddenly just be overcome by that, doesn't it? Yeah. Ah, pfft. Ow. Oh, oh, this is it. This is it. Oh, no, I was afraid of this. We can't travel now. This is all my fault. We should have left Basil earlier. I love you, Benjamin, but be quiet. I don't care. I need help. Yes, yes, we need a midwife. Is there is there one who would accept Rachel? Uh, well, Agnes Steinauren is tassing. Is she going to be weird about the Jewish thing? I don't know. I don't, I don't know her well enough. Yeah, I don't remember Agnes very well. Um, I mean, I mean, if we're wrong with that, then... You know, I assume the printer would correct us. Yeah. I don't remember very much about Dr. Stoltz either. We didn't talk to him much. And there's a little... People say things about him a bit in the first... Uh, yeah. The first act, but I don't remember any of it specifically. I I, I would go with the midwife. Yeah. All right. Yeah, for a midwife. Yeah, that's fair. Agnes Steinarin. She's Tassing's midwife. Could you get her? Klaus? Yes, I should get her. Agnes has delivered every child in Tassing, as long as I can remember. She would never turn any woman away. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Klaus, you're a mensch. Enough with the thanks. Get me the midwife. Oh, yes. Andreas, you're forgiven. Casper, it was good to have you over, but you both have to leave. Ah, uh, yep, of course. Understood. Thank you, Klaus. Good luck, Rachel. Uh, thank you. I'll need it. I'll go fetch Agnes. Thank you for joining us, Andreas. Oh, I almost forgot. You should see the bonfire preparations in the town commons. How are we still talking? Dude, you missed them on your last visit. Klaus? I'm going. <laughs> thank you, Klaus. We'll be going. Every single time a new word bubble started to be sketched, I got angrier and angrier at him. Like, fucking go, my dude. Everyone seems to be working hard for the bonfire tonight. The commons look festive decorated like this. Look at all the flowers, master. And the bonfire is huge. How's the fire coming? Those logs work out all right for you, Endress? Coming along as expected. Nearly finished. Okay, everybody's answering all at once. Good, good. The way he worded that was strange. Those logs work out okay for you? Mm. All right, everyone. Remember, after the bonfire tonight, we celebrate as usual. We will all gather in the woods and the women will collect herbs as tradition demands. 
I see. Otto, the abbot has forbidden harvesting in the forest. Please, for everyone's sake, reconsider your actions. Thank you, Father, but the abbot's order goes against God's law. The forest belongs to all of us, as do all of its game and fowl and fish. He cannot claim ownership over that which the Lord gave us to hold in common. No, I'm sorry, Father. We will proceed as planned. Tassing has never let anything get in the way of our St. John's customs as long as I can remember. We won't start now. And remember, tomorrow I'll show you proof that as sure as the sun turns round the earth, God and our saints are with us. Wait, why is that gotta wait until tomorrow? He's just like, he's creating the perfect window for someone to kill him. Good day, Andreas. Hello, Brother Wislav. You looked upset at Otto's announcement. Is everything all right? Otto is becoming more aggressive in his defiance of the abbot. Father Gernot will not take this news well. Well, unless the abbot has a pole arm up his sleeve, there's no way to stop them. And Father Gernot is too much a coward. The abbot knows the Duke of Bavaria would not allow a massacre like what happened at Forest, uh, at Kempen to happen here. Okay, that's good. Right? Yeah. Well, the abbot won't need an army. The Duke will send his. Hmm, fair point. But why is the abbot so angry about it? Didn't you just hear Father Thomas, Andreas? The abbot declared the woods off limits. Anyway, it's not for me to say. I'm sure the abbot will tell you more. He sent me with an invitation for you to dine with him tonight. I'm sure the father will want to discuss the situation over supper. Yeah, of course I'll attend. Thank you, Brother Weislav. We have a lot of things to talk to him about. Does the invitation extend to Casper as well? I'm sorry, Andreas, but Father Abbot has asked you to come to his house alone. Ah, <laughs> uh, please tell the abbot I'll see him this evening. Well, I guess I'll see what all this fuss is about. I'll meet you back at the Golden Hand after dinner, all right? Can I help set up the festival decorations while you're with the abbot? Uh, sure, yeah, but be back before sundown, all right? Yes, thank you, master. I'll see you later. Okay, right into it, apparently. That's, a. Uh... Huh. <laughs> okay. That's... You know, traditions are... What they are. I, I feel like I'm, a, I'm in a folk horror film. Yeah, <laughs> absolutely. I was absolutely just thinking, this is some Wicker Man midsummer shit that we are witnessing. All right, it's fine. Uh, the game's trying to rush us right along into this conversation, but we are over an hour into the episode now, so I think probably this is where we ought to call it for today. When y'all come back next time, we have what I'm thinking is just like a critically important conversation. Maybe by a large margin the most important conversation we've had at all so far yet, the entire game. I feel like we could really fuck things up here <laughs> in a very serious, harmful way. I hope we don't. I'm sorry. I'm distracted by the person in the background. Do you do you see that? They just want that out of the frame. Yeah, it's. I was about. I was about to flip the video feedback over. Hold on, I'm flipping it back over. We can probably walk over here. Yeah, this person who has just pulled their head inside their shirt. Yep. Very good. That sure is occurring. Anyway, come back next time to see if we inadvertently get everybody killed, and we'll see you then. Bye.